Hi everyone, I'm Evelyn. I'm Sha. And we are NEMS Counselor. Welcome to the part 2 of our video series. Today we'll be answering more questions regarding uh, digital device yep. use and gaming. Yeah. Online games can be a supplement you know, for children in terms of the interaction or in terms of learning purpose. Mm -hmm. Yet, I think it's important. I think there's some games like Pokemon Go or Jurassic World Alive. I think that's what it's called, yeah, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a way it can be for them to be active and they can be moving on the go constantly, correct? Yet, it still comes back down to the, the main important is about moderation, yeah, about having a balance. Though uh, they doing this online, they are learning something. I think we must not kind of neglect the part where social interaction is very important. As well as human beings, we are all social creatures, right? So having people around us, having fostering good connection is very important to us. We need a human touch. Right? Yes, correct. Yeah. So that's so moderation and balance, having vice of both world of online yet also physical. It's important. So the first up, uh, the thing is that the blue light from our screen yeah. actually blocks the production of melatonin which is essential for initiating sleep. Okay, so, so those who tend to use device heavily mm. just right before bedtime will have a more difficult time of falling asleep. Okay. Yeah. In fact, there's a study that uh, was published in 2018. Mm. It actually They actually found that unrestricted evening use of uh, tablets delay the bedtime and actually disrupt the circadian uh, rhythm. timing okay. yeah rhythm timing and alertness mm. in the morning in fact excessive screen time uh, do more than just affecting the sleep okay. you know? it can uh, strain the child's eyes you know mm. leading to very tired and dry eyes mm. uh, when they are always hunched over and yeah. they're furiously tapping on the, the tablet it can also affect their posture right yeah so then, then they can end up having neck pain mm. shoulder pain it causes a lot more um, health problems as well. right having some in between breaks is really helpful, right? Yeah. So I think what happens is when kids are so involved in their screen or they just focus so focus too much on their screen itself, it limits the interaction. And then when they limit the interaction, right, they just keep chasing after the, the feel good feeling, which the screen is at this dopamine part of it, you know, mm. the feel good feeling. I think it helps to start instilling healthy habits from young. Okay. For instance, um, set reasonable limits regarding when and where they can use the devices in the house. Mm. Parents can uh, participate in physical activities with their children together, okay. you know, kite flying, they can uh, do simple workout at home together. Cycling together. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So um, then they can also uh, consider stopping the device use at least one hour before bedtime mm. so that they can wind out together with the child mm. and that's where in the first video we talk about setting the family traditions yeah. yeah so that's where they can come in and uh, spend more time to bond with the child going along the lines of you talking about modeling healthy habits right? i think you mm. also have to talk about how we have to model for our children Because I think for children, they kind of like, they will kind of follow what the parents do. Yeah. So if the parent can be more, can even model and then be uh, a role model for the for the kids, I think it'd be very helpful. Yeah. So mo consistency, modeling for their children, that helps them to learn, and then that helps to send some put some some safeguards for the children about the device use in the gaming. I think we need to spend some time to say like to talk about parents about their own feelings. I mean parents we have to acknowledge that how they go through what their whole their whole day works kind of like can affect their feelings. Mm, right? True, yeah, true. Yeah. 
So so like for example, if they go to work and then they have a lot of frustration, a lot of stress, they come home. This is a moment where they can check themselves in, how they feeling, attend to the feeling, and also take care for themselves. Because if you can't take care of yourself, how are you going to take care of other people? It's yeah. just like when you're already feeling upset at work and mm. then you come home and yeah. you see your child gaming instead of doing homework mm. when yeah. he or she may have already finished the homework. Yeah, yeah but, but the, the sight of him or her, her gaming and mm. your blood just brings up to a boy and yeah. emotions come out and the next thing you know, you just start nagging at them Boom. instead. Yeah. yeah, I think it's not exactly helping with that connection. Exactly. So yeah. it helps for parents to uh, first check in with themselves, mm. regulate their own emotions first before they try to make connection with yes. the child. Yes, correct. Mm. Because they also are important. Yeah. Parents are important. Their feelings are so important and we have to acknowledge that. Yeah. Mm. Also, speaking of that, sometimes parents will experience a lot of anxiety and helplessness because they feel like whenever anything happens to their kids, they don't know what to do. So I think this is where we having for them to equip with online resources community resources at their fingertips mm. will really help them. So at least they know, oh, okay, I have some problem, I know where to turn to, where to find help. Yeah. So these are very important, resources are very important for them. Exactly. So if you do need more parenting resources, there are programs such as the Touch Parenting and the Triple P program that you can consider. Yeah. So thank you for joining us here today. Uh, we hope that you have found the two-part series to be helpful for you. Stay safe, take care.